Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at Sea Creek 5, specifically air operation. So what I've set up today is basically a what if scenario if Gotha bombers were used against Russian ships during World War I. So to do this, I've gone ahead and uh, borrowed my favorite tabletop simulator, changed the background a little bit to create a little bit more interest here. Of course, if you look really carefully, this is clearly not a World War I 1917-esque map, but that's okay. And basically we have a group of four Gotha bombers. Sea Krieg 5 manages aircraft in a very abstract fashion, as you'll see in a minute. Our target today, by the way, is the Russian, the Imperial Russia, because the revolution's going on, the Bayan 2 on 1903. So how do we do air operations? It's actually straightforward. Um, basically, it describes your launching operations. It's going to tell you, you know, how to calculate how many ships get messed up on the flight deck if you have an aircraft carrier, how many aircrafts don't make it because the engine's not working well and things along those lines. It will actually walk you through the entire process. It's actually a lot easier, like I said, than it looks. So how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this handy-dandy form that they actually give you. So what I did is I have this little uh, Excel spreadsheet slash Google Sheets thing that actually keeps track of all the details you'll need to know for an air operation. Now keep in mind, you don't need to put aircraft on the map in Sea Creek 5. So this is basically what I have. I have a little airport actually to start this up. I loaded up Google Earth and I basically picked a random airport in northern Germany and picked a random chart that kind of looked like my map. Worked out the distance to be 76 nautical miles. Let me show you what to do with that piece of information. So basically I have my uh, setup here. If I was doing a carrier, I'd write down the name of the carrier plus the captain plus the date. Yeah, 15th of July of 1917. Uh, we're going to start our launching operations at 6 o'clock in the morning. Hopefully we need to recover the aircraft. I believe it's by 1025. I don't remember exactly the time. We're not going to rearm. If I had any combat air patrol, I'd write those details in here. But I don't. We're doing a straight-up strike mission. My strike mission is going to be made up of four groups of Gotha G4 bombers. Each one of these is going to be loaded with eight times, 8x I should say, 50 kilogram general purpose bombs. Penetration on these things is not terribly good. It's 0.8 inches vertically. It's one inch horizontally. Uh, the, if I do penetrate the armor, which I don't think is going to happen, this is how much damage I do. If I don't penetrate, this is how much damage. And if I have a pass through, which is where the bomb would actually go through the deck and out the bottom of the ship, that's always embarrassing. Um, you can see the damage right there. It's my offensive value, my defensive value, as well as you know, kind of how many hit points. My top speed is a whopping 65 miles an hour. Cruise speed 56. I have 268 minutes of endurance. That sounds a little weird to do endurance in uh, minutes like that, but you'll see it actually works pretty well. My peak altitude is 21,300 feet, and my launch time is 6 o'clock. I actually worked this out. I'll show you how. So swinging down here, um, basically to do a launch order, you're going to start by picking what time you start the launch. And then you're going to have to calculate how many minutes per airplane it takes to launch. How do you do this? Well, what you do is you go to the chart for launch. You figure out what the crew rating is. And basically, since I'm a land base, I get to double this value, which actually works pretty well for me. I'm putting a little bit of extra time in there, too, because, you know, they're big old bombers, so they're probably going to take a little longer to get airborne. So I said four minutes, basically a minute of plane. So that means by about 16 minutes after 6 o'clock, theoretically, you know this never works in the real world, um, we should have all our aircraft in the air. We then need to form up um, 16 minutes for launch time. We then need to form up. It takes four minutes per squadron per past the first one to form up. Technically, that would mean one, two, three times four gives you 12 minutes of form up time. Remaining endurance, by the way, is simply a matter of adding these two up and subtracting it out of our 268 minutes. Those should be helpful. Then um, we have to go ahead and figure out at 56 miles an hour, it's going to take us one hour and 21 minutes, knots rather, to uh, get to our target, which means our time on target should be 7.49 in the morning, which isn't too bad given that we left at, you know, 6. But, you know, it, it happens. So then what you do is you calculate your flight to the target. So our speed is 56, and then we get this thing called navigational error. What's that? Let me show you. What you do is you come over to this little chart, and there's this handy-dandy chart here that says, based on what the sea level is, what added flight time do you need? When I rolled this originally, I got a 23, so I added 15 minutes because we're at sea state 4 here. So um, that would have been the extra time added. So I went ahead and threw that on there, which means instead of 7.49 in the morning, we're actually getting there at 8.04 in the morning. You know, that's not that bad if you think about it. It's not going to be the end of the world. So then we go and cal calculate combat time. How do you calculate combat time? Well, in Sea Creek 5, you can only have nine aircraft attack a target at a time. 
we have 16 aircraft, which means it's going to be two groups of eight, for example. I don't like to do it that way because I find nah, it's a little less dramatic if you do one roll versus four. So I'm actually going to do four groups of four that attack the airplane. Now, how long does it take to do an attack? It's not that bad if you think about it. If I do four separate attacks, that's two minutes per run. That's going to be eight minutes. If I say I want two attacks to be at a time, I could do that as well. So in this case, I said about six minutes combat time. Um, whenever you do combat time, you have to double the amount of endurance minutes lost. Uh, leaving me with uh, that much. It takes an hour for 21 to get back to base. Theoretically, I should be back home by 9.30. Recovery begins at 9.30, and by 9.47, by the way, you get the value for that, just by coming up here in the chart and uh, making sure you double it, because again, remember, we're working on a land-based operation, and that gives us a time of 9.47. So that's filling out this sheet. This gets a little more complicated when you have like 30 different plane types, but for us, this works really well. So let's go ahead and jump back to our table real quickly and pretend we've done one of our turns. Now what I've done is in Photoshop is I went ahead and opened up the actual sheet for the buy-in two here. Uh, normally he'd come over here, he'd go ahead and uh, make his orders. Since he's not expecting to be attacked, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a quick brush. Uh, let's see here, he is commencing independent action. He's uh, steady midships. He's uh, making revolutions for, I said he was doing 10 knots, excuse me, bad handwriting. He's not doing anything special whatsoever because we don't have to worry about it too, too much. So that would be enough. So then, of course, we come over here and we do our usual movements. We grab our handy dandy ruler. Go ahead and move this sucker up. I believe we said 10 knots. So we would go about that far in the two minute turn. And the aircraft, like I said, shouldn't be physically represented, but let's pretend as if they just arrived. So uh, now the aircraft, of course, will come zipping in here like this. Sometimes it's nice to have the aircraft physically have a presence on the map just to give you a clue of which escort, like if you had something like this, where you had like an escorting ship that could fire screening fire or something like that. But that's only really important if you're doing like a World War II carrier engagement. And they get to about, let's say, here. Why am I stopping them here? Time to go take a look at the sheet. So if you take a look, we have rapid fire batteries down here. In this case, we have two 76.2 millimeters. We have a 20, 75 millimeters, and we have four 57 millimeter Hotchkiss guns. So basically, these two sets are divided evenly between the port and the starboard side of the ship. Total AA factor for those particular weapons are two and two, respectively. When you're firing defensive fire, theoretically, you're only allowed to fire one of these at a time. You can't use both, because theoretically, the attacks only come from one side of the ship. But sometimes on things like destroyers, you can actually combine this. Taking a look down here at the 75 millimeter, you can see that there is no AA factor, which will not be able to engage the aircraft with them. Coming down here, you can also see that they all, even though we have four guns, they have no AA factor, so we can't use them. So we're given a whopping two. But the good news is, and this is kind of something I do, the book doesn't specify, is we have a medium range on this, and our bombers today are going to be doing low-level glide bombing. Again, we didn't have an exact reading on what that is, but it would probably be a level bomb in the real world, but we're going to use low-level glide bombing, which means it's going to be a range of S, but our maximum range is M. So that actually means I get a free shot. That's actually pretty exciting. So I can actually double this up to four. So what do you do with that value? Well, what I will do is I'm going to pretend the airplanes flew through all of them and they got to about here. So now we get to go ahead and see how effective our anti-aircraft fire is. So watch this. You start with the AA rating. We're going to leave that alone. You start with the visibility. A visibility today, it's a normal code, so it's 10. Uh, we're not using any fancy fusing. We have no fancy radar control. We're not evasive action. So that gives us a base value of 10. So then we take our AA rating of 4. We zip over to the 10 column, and that gives us a 0. That's not a bad thing. So then we're going to flip over to the probability table. We're going to take a look at the 0 column, and then we're going to take a look at how many attacking aircraft there are. Remember, there's 16 attacking aircraft, but they're coming at us in four groups of four. So that means I need a four or less four times to try to shoot down a single aircraft. I don't think this is going to happen, but you never know. So that's a 70, so that doesn't do anything. Try it again. That is a 62. That's not going to do anything either. That is a 40. Not going to do anything either. Bounce this over here. That is a 68. 
so uh, none of our AA fire was able to attack and damage one of these bombs. By the way, if one of them was successful to hit, if you want to determine whether or not you drove the bomber off or you destroyed it, it's actually pretty cool. You just roll the dice again, and you compare the value. In this case, it's uh, 92 to the defensive value of a given bomber. In this case, the defensive value is 17. That aircraft was destroyed. So um, in this particular case, um, all the bombers got through, so I don't have to actually adjust the number of planes. There is a rule in the book for counting for mishaps during takeoff and aircraft that just don't want to work that particular day. There's actually a separate chart for that. You have aircraft dropout. So what we could do is um, our total distance here is under 100 miles. So theoretically, we'd have to roll a six or a seven or greater four times to see whether or not one of those aircraft dropped out on its way to the target. But I've skipped that step because it's such a short distance and it's not really a lot of aircraft. So I'm not going to worry about that. So now it is the aircraft's turn to go ahead and attack the Bayan 2. This is where it gets a little more complicated. So first of all, what you're going to do is you're going to go to air attacks. You're going to start by checking the visibility. In this case, there's daylight. Uh, there's no fancy funnel smoke, no evasive action. The speed is 10 knots, so minus 1. Target size is a 1, so that brings us to 0. We're using dive and glide bombing at low levels. So that's plus 7, so that gives us a plus 7. So that's not terrible. Then what you do is you take that 7 and you compare it to the number of attack. Remember, doing 4 groups of 4. That gives us a 34 or less for a successful attack. Let's go ahead and see what happens. We'll go ahead and split them off to make it a little bit easier here. So we need a 34 or less. Let's see what happens. So we get a 3. Wow. Does a 3 count for an extra hit? A 3 counts as 2 hits. So I better do this correctly. We'll get ourselves a red dice. So uh, we have two hits, and we have to actually confirm whether or not those two hits actually hit more than once because of the fact we're dropping eight bombs at a time. But um, we're going to go ahead and roll the rest of our attacks. So that group, nicely done, guys. We're going to go ahead and grab it again. 34 or less. 31. So that's another hit. Good job, guys. So these Gothas are actually uh, they're worth their money here. They didn't even get zinged at all. That is a 34. Hold on, hold on. Don't make a liar out of me. 34 is legal, so we get a fourth hit. Wow. These guys are doing great. We're not even done checking. That is a 21, so that is a fifth hit. So now here's where it gets cool. Each one of these bombers dropped a stack of bombs when it did its glide bomb attack. That means there's a chance that of the eight bombs dropped per bomb run, that uh, more than one of those bombs actually could have hit. So uh, this is actually pretty cool. So the way we do that is we take the 10, and we compare it to the number of bombs in the stack, 8, and we check the value. So theoretically, for five attacks, a 75 or less will actually give us an extra hit. Let's see what happens. So that is a 74. I'm actually going to get myself a second die to keep track of that. So that's the first one. 75 or less. That is a 21. 21 counts as two more attacks. Oh, boy. So we need to do this three more times. 74 or less. That is a 14. 14, 14, 14. This is a lucky day for the Imperial German Air Force. So that counts as another two attacks. Uh, we now have to roll this two more times. Again, 74 or less. That's another one. And one last time. Let's find out what happens. That is a 10. Wow. Three. One. Two, three. Wow. So that was a total of 14 individual 50 kilogram bombs dropped from the 16 bombers struck the buy and two. So that is interesting because uh, when I did my test run at this, it took um, only one hit and it did nothing. Now there's a freak chance we might do some real damage here. So um, now we need to determine where the bombs hit. So to do that, pretty straightforward, we're going to scoot over to our damage determination, damage location. We were using a broad aspect. It's a glide bomb, which means short range. So we need to go ahead and roll these two dice 14 times in order to determine where each one of those bombs hit. This is where Sea Creek slows down a little bit. So we'll go ahead and uh, try it out and see what happens. So we get a 76. So I'm probably going to have to leave myself a note somewhere. 
that uh, just kind of keeps track of all the different damages that we just are about to receive. So we have a location 76. Location 40. You know, the funny thing is, after doing all this, we're going to find out that it did uh, absolutely squat. We have an 89. Man, those bombs are just whew, perfect. It's an 83. That looks like a 54. We're not even done the first dice worth of damage here. That is a 72. I'm going to get rid of this one because we did that. So that takes care of the first set of damage, but we're still we're just getting warmed up here. Yeah, that's a 74. Getting a lot of 70s. That is a 91. I'd be curious what that's actually going to total out to be. Lucky I know the armor on this thing. That is a 16. Ooh, I wonder if any of these are actually going to penetrate and cause a critical hit. I'm kind of getting the feeling none of them will. That is an 18. We're getting there. Watch this be a 22. Oh, so close. <laughs> oh, I was off by six. All right, let's go ahead and try this again. I'd be so mad if that was a 22. Anyway, so that's a 23. We get two more dice. 51. 33. And one last one. 34. Okay. So a total of, as you can see, 14 um, 50 kilogram bombs struck our ship. Now, taking a look at the armor on our ship, I'm looking real quickly in none of these values, with the exception of Barbet and turret are possibly going to be penetrated by the bombs as a matter of fact if it does hit the turret or it hits the barbet there's a chance that it'll actually pass through and up the bottom but um we'll we'll see what happens so let's go ahead and take a look at our handy dandy chart here um by the way this chart you cannot get this in pdf format i just literally sat there with my scanner you can see the little plastic i put on each one of the sheets so let's go ahead and see where those hits were so i'm going to go ahead and do one of these kind of actions real quickly so we can keep track of it so let's start with the uh, lowest number here. We have a 16 and an 18. A 16 and an 18 are both 5V, that's main belt. 5V, 5V. Uh, main belts are no P, um, they will not penetrate. Let's get rid of those two. We have two 5Vs uh, moving up. Do we have anything, what's our next highest number? I think the 23. 23 all the way up to 35 is all 5V. That's one, two, three, four, five Vs for a total of six, five Vs, which makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six. None of those bombs will penetrate because if you take a look at the five V armor, it's 5.8. The penetration, if you remember from before, um, is only 0.8 on Vs, so we don't even come close to damaging it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next number. So what comes after? 35, 36 to 44. Do we have anything there? Yeah, we have a 40. Uh, what's the 40? The 40 counts as belt ends. I don't think we're going to penetrate that either. Nope, not even close. So belt end in this particular case is a 6V. That does not penetrate. Um, let's see what comes after. What about 54? What does that count as? That is a barbette hit. Interesting. So um, we're definitely going to have to make a note of this one because um, we have no armor on the barbette. We have to check to see if that's a pass through. Going ahead and take a look at the other options here. We have a 76 and a 74. What does that do for us? That gives us a turret hit. Our turret, I believe, also. You no, know, the turret's actually really well armored. I take that back. That's five inch armors, so that's not going to penetrate either. That's the 76 and 74. What is the number for turret? The number for turret is 8V. Two turret hits. Um, what is there, 84 and 80? Uh, let's see, that is superstructure. We have two 9Vs. Uh, we got this one already. And we also have a 91. So what's the 91 going to be? 91 is going to be superstructure also. Woo! That was a lot of work. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
Yeah, I'm at um three, one, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We missed that seventy two right now. Uh that seventy two is also an eight V. Okay, there we go. So the only one we're going to have to check to see if it did any real damage is really this guy right here, this 54, because it penetrated something with no armor. So what do you do? So what you do is you check to see if you pass through with that bomb. The bomb actually hit the barbette one, dunk, dunk, and popped out the other side. We need to see if it actually went off as it did that. So um, this is considered a general purpose, which is um, taking a look real quick. It's considered sap. So we have a 50-50 shot of the thing actually exploding after penetrating the deck. Um, a bar of that hit, by the way, is going to be very bad. So this is a 60, which means 60 on SAP means we are a pass-through. P-T. Womp womp. So um, unfortunately, that, that, that could have gone a little better. So all these failed to penetrate, and the one bomb that did penetrate literally went in the tur uh, barbette and then out the other side and land in the water and probably exploded or sunk to the bottom of the ocean. So that, that's kind of how that happens. All right, now let's see how much damage we actually caused. So how do we do this? Again, this is pretty straightforward. If we take a look, none of these penetrated, which means if we roll a 60 or greater, we get a uh, 87 damage. If we roll a 60 or less, we get 66 damage. So we need to do this a total of... 13 times. Keep track of it over here. All right, so our first is that, so that's going to do the half damage. That's going to do the 66. So we'll keep that over there. That's also going to do the half damage. Or not half damage, reduced damage. That is a 20. That's also going to do reduced damage. That is a 78. That is going to do full damage. Uh, that's also going to do half damage. Uh, you have to actually tell me what that number is. That is a 10. That's also going to do half damage. Or not, again, reduce damage, I should say. So that's also going to do reduce damage. How many do we have? Seven. So we got to do quite a few more. That is also going to do reduce damage. So I see seven, eight. Seriously? Let's see here. That's a 40. That's also going to do reduced damage. So that's 9. Hey, there we go. That's going to do its full fake not penetrating damage. That's another one. I think these dice are loaded. Let's see. That is a 23. So that is 10, 11, 12. We get one more. And we get another bad one. Okay, so if you remember, reduced damage is 66. So we're going to have to go 66 times uh, 11. That means we do 726 damage, even though none of those actually penetrated. So um, I'm going to have to make a quick little note of that. 7, 2, 6. That's actually a lot of damage. I'm not going to lie. That might cause some problems. The other one is 87 times 2, because we did 2... Improved damage times 174. Is it? Yeah, 174. So that's a plus another 174 for the damages that actually did something. And then finally, we need that one pass through damage. The pass through damage on this guy, we need to roll the dice again to see what happens. See what happens. It's a 35, which means we do reduce damage, but we still do 84 damage, so it's not so bad. Okay, so total damage, before things get interesting, is 984 damage. Now, the important thing here is we need to see if we're going to pass through eight damage tiers, because if we do, that means that we're actually going to be destroyed instantly. In this particular case, we do not. We fall short of the seventh damage tier. But um, that's actually quite a bit of damage. If you think about it, 984 is a lot. Now we need to check for critical hits. I didn't say this was a quick game, right? So critical hits. The probability of a critical hit on our one that passed through is a, uh, 13, right? 13. So let's see if we get a critical hit. Not even close. 
So we checked one. Now, since none of these penetrated, we need to roll under a seven a total of um, 13 times. Nope. One, two, three, seven. One critical hit. Also four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Okay, so we have one critical hit, and that was the fourth roll, I believe. Taking a look at my uh, numbers real, real quick. Of course, I was silly, and I erased everything. Oh, wait, one, two, four. So the fourth hit was at location 83, one, two, four, which was, uh, I'm going to check that, check it, check it, check it. That was a superstructure hit, and it counts as a critical hit. Okay, so now we get to find out what that critical hit actually did. So this ship is from 1903, but this is the, I believe, 1980 version. So um, I'm going to go based on the uh, more modern version. It was a superstructure hit. We need to go ahead and roll to see what the critical hit actually is. So that's a 17. So if we go to superstructure 17, that is critical hit 124. Well, let's go ahead and find 124 and see what happened. Permanent loss of communication to engine rooms for the duration of the game, all bridge commands for change of speed. Um, are required require a success roll at the end of the command phase. A roll of 1 to 25 is required to change speed as ordered. But there's a chance that it does more damage. So how do we record this? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go grab my eraser real quick. That is the smallest eraser ever. There we go. Grab my brush. This is turn number two. Technically, it was turn one, two, four. Um, uh, engine, um, loss. Okay, so now we have to roll to see if there's actually a worse effect. So um, we're going to go ahead and grab this guy again. Oh, wait a minute. That was a non-penetrating. It doesn't matter. Even though it was a non-penetrating critical, theoretically, it would be a class B hit, but this particular damage causes A, B, and C. But like taking a look down here, you can see that in the event that it was a non-penetrator, it would do like no additional damage or anything like that. Just a little heads up in case that's confusing. So now we have to roll for additional damage effects. So if we get a 70 or less on this roll, that critical hit is the gift that we'll keep on giving. Nice, a 66. So now we also get critical hit effect 163. So let's scoot down to 163. Our gunnery officer has been killed. Oh no. This is still turn two. 163. Gun. Off. Dead. All right, what does this actually mean, though? Let's take a look. 163. Gunner officer killed. No change in gunnery orders for primary battery guns externally. No problem. Shipboard fire. Severity 20. This is turn two. We already have a fire. Can't do anything about it, by the way, until next turn. Um, let's take a look. Uh, fire control radar out of action. Don't have one. Port or starboard searchlight battery out of order. Um, we're going to use the port side. Uh, let's see here, 163, uh, permanent loss of one box of rapid fire battery. We have to pick which one it is, but since we're unlucky folks, we're going to assume that we lost the one that we had that actually can help us out here. Um, let's see here, uh, permanent loss of one. Now we need a 70 or less to see if that damage is even worse. 71, ding, 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 we're safe. Woo, okay, does that mean we're done? No, it does not mean we're done. I'll tell you why. So if you take a look back on our chart here, you'll notice we took 984 damage, which means we have to check six times to see if there's any general damage caused on the ship. Wow, who knew, right? So the first time, we're going to take a 70. We need greater than a 70. Ouch. So I'm going to put a little dot there to remind me. So now we need greater than an 80. Hey, that worked. Put a line right through that one. 
Uh, we need greater than a 75. Hey, look at that. We need greater than an 85. Nope. We need greater than an 80. Now we need greater than a 90. I don't think this is going to happen. 82. So that means we get one, two, three, four rolls on the general damage chart. Let's go find general damage. Uh, that's this one right here. We don't need any. All right, so general damage. Let's find out what happens. So we need four rolls. All right, here we go. The first general damage, 22. So let's go find uh, 22. 22 for general damage. Uh, that is a number 604, and it can only happen once. Let's go find a 604. 604. Compartment flooding causes list to port or starboard. Starboard. Compartment flooding causes list to starboard. Secondary battery guns on low side unable to fire. Permanent loss of one damage control point and two knots of speed. We also lose a fire control system. Um, we lose our other searchlight battery. We lose one rapid fire battery. We lose all fire control in one rapid battery, and we're at six or higher. So um, we need to roll a 65 or greater not to have additional effects. Oh, no. So it's going to cost a 610 and a 604. Oh, man. This, was, uh, this, is, this is amazing. This causes a 610, 604, RF dead, list, starboard. All right, what is the 610? Everything else is like, uh, what was that, 604? Um, let's see here. We lose another box of rapid-fire batteries. So we scoot back over here. We'll assume it's the one on the other side, the side that we're listing towards. Uh, what else happens here? Uh, searchlight battery. We only have one left, I think. Ah, it's gone too. All right, let's see here. 604. We lose one point of damage control. Down to three, which means we only solve three damage problems at a time. We lost that already. We lose fire control boxes and one rapid fire battery. We lose them all. So um, fortunately, that would do one of these kind of things real quickly. That's a bummer. By the way, you want to roll to see which one. I'm just doing this quickly. And we also take 610. 610. Collapse of water tape bulkheads causes flooding for ships currently in damage tier 4 or above only. Roll against the following table for effects. For ships currently at damage tier 3 or less, ignore. Oh boy, here we go. Let's find out what happens. 51. 51. Damage to power distribution system. Permanent loss of one damage control point. Oh boy, that was uh, quite the hit there. Uh, permanent loss of one damage control point. Uh, let's see here. Bruce, uh, bridge command rating by two. We're going to ignore that. Flag rating by two. All secondary battery guns in two sections cannot fire. Well, let's look at my secondary battery. This is considered my secondary fire battery. It probably, imagining the bomb kind of did one of these and then exploded and blew out the bottom of the ship here. So I'm going to say that these two are out of order from that shot. Okay, so that would be handy, except for the fact we still have to roll two more times, or three more times to see what happened. So that tier is all taken care of. Now we got to do it again. We're going to go ahead and roll. That is a 94. A 94. We're going to go ahead and check our chart again. Uh, let's see. General damage, 94. General damage. Ah, here we go. 94. 94 is a 616. Or a book. 616 is a severe structural damage for ships at damage tier. Not us. Ship breaks in two. Oh, no. Lucky for us, this is not relevant because we're not at tier 8. For damage 7 or below, we lose one engine room or boiler room flooded. Flooded engine room is out of uh, order. Let's take a look. What do we have here? So we're going to lose a boiler room, which knocks our top speed down to 20. That's not that bad. So this is still the same attack. 610. Stuff. <laughs> so uh, we take that one and scratch that out. So now we're going to do the next one. We're going to go ahead and roll and see what happens. This is, uh, oh, that was not the best roll. 64. So taking a look at general for 64, general, 64, general, 64 is a 610. I thought we had a 610 already. So we get a 610 again. So we got to roll to see what that 610 does. That's a 78. 
78 with a 610 gives me flooding and one boiler room. Boiler room is permanently out of action. We lose another boiler room if we roll a 35 or less. Okay, so we just lost another boiler room. So that gets scratched out. Um, we have two, 610. Go ahead and put a line through that one to remind us. Boiler, OOA. So I could tell you the story. This bomb literally must have come in exploded, um, caused some kind of, maybe it landed in the funnel and blew up inside and like ricocheted and caused debris because it's causing some really serious flooding and a lot of boiler room damage all at the same time. So um, one thing you have to watch out for in this game, by the way, is if more than half of your uh, engine spaces are flooded, your ship will actually start to sink. So we'll keep that in mind. All right, so now we need another roll on um, 610. I uh, can't actually remember what that is. I'm going to say that's an 82. So uh, coming over here, an 82 under general. 82, 82 under general. 82 is a 613. This one can only happen once. Let's see what a 613 actually entails. Uh, flooding and shaft tunnel. We are 6 to 8. Flooding spreads to 1 shaft tunnel. Uh, flooding spreads and 1 adjacent is disabled if I get a 40 or less. So um, we need to roll higher than a 40, otherwise we lose both propellers. So that's a 96, we only lose a single propeller. So now we're down one prop shaft, which reduces our speed to 11 knots. Oh, this is bad. Prop OOA. All right, put a line through that one. Last dice I need to roll, okay. Unless, of course, it's one of those kind. So 33, taking a look at our chart one more time. 33 under general is a 606. So this is still turn two, and this is still from the bombing. Remember, this is 14 bombs, guys. Uh, 606 is the equivalent of... 606, flooding and structural damage. For the duration of the game, no evasive maneuver possible. Maximum term limit to half speed. I lose a damage control point. That's easy. Then I have one unit of damage control left. And let's see, searchlight, yeah, it's not an issue. Um, damage to firefighting system. Add 20 when fighting fires. That's going to be a problem. Next turn, an additional roll of... Uh, additional roll. We're tier... What tier are we? Tier 7, I think? Yes, yes we are. We're tier 6. On an additional roll... Oops, additional roll. Here we go. Damage 5. Okay, we have to find out what happens. Let's take a look. 15. 15, um, that's the sable here. Permanent loss of one primary battery turret and two secondary battery mounts. That sucks. So we lose one primary turret. I guarantee you, again, I'm thinking the bullet went this way, but all the damage seems to be back here. So it's probably this guy. And uh, what else did I lose? And I lose two secondary battery mounts. I think it's going to be everybody on the side that we're listing towards. And that is it. So um, that was a lot. So our ship now is dead. Uh, it's not dead in the water, but it's, it's hurting pretty bad. It's almost to the point of flooding. Another engine room out of action would put us to the point we're probably going to sink. Our speed is reduced to 11 knots because we're missing a propeller right now. And um, we have a fire. So now we need to see if we can fight the fire. We still have one point of damage control, so we're going to try to attack the fire. This would be considered next turn, by the way. So we get a 67 plus 20. So 67, 77, 87. So there's no change, which means 20 extra damage is actually done to us, which brings us up to 1,004 damage. Uh-oh. So then we're going to go on another turn. We'll fight the fire. That's a 50, but you have to go up to 70 because our firefighting equipment is damaged, which means we subtract 10 from severity. This now becomes, this is turn 4, this becomes a 10 severity fire, but it still does 20 damage, or it still does 10 damage, I should say. 1014. So then we go to the next turn. We get to see if we can hit that fire one more time. Perfect. That's 100. We add 10 to the severity, so it goes back up to 20. So it does another 20 damage. So on this turn, this would be turn 5. Now the turn is back up to a fire. So 1034 damage. Uh oh. So the following turn, we get a 51. A 51. Tracks 10 from severity, but it still does 10 damage. So that's 1044, getting close. Turn six back to 10. Gotta try this one more time. Oh, hopefully it's a low number this time. 
Thwait fires out. And that's it. So at the conclusion of this, our buy-in to is down to half speed. He has no back turret. Starboard side he's listing towards has no secondary battery guns. His rapid-fire batteries have been devastated. He has no working searchlights. He's almost this close to complete destruction. Um, if he takes any more underwater hits, he's going to start sinking. Um, he can no longer do evasive action. He's uh, put the fire out. And you can see he's suffered so much damage. So anyway, hopefully you guys appreciated that and realized just how much damage even a Gotha bomber in World War I can cause. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, maybe I'll do something with dogfighting next time. But again, you can see this takes a little while. All right, enjoy.